In this video, I would like to teach you how to find the domain, vertical asymptotes, and the horizontal asymptotes of this following rational function. So the first thing is, why don't we look at the domain? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the numerator, the denominator, and then the whole fraction together. And when you think about domain, you think about, are there any issues or problems uh, if I plug in any x value I want in here? In other words, is there any x value when you plug it into here that's going to make the numerator do some wacky thing? Not really, right? You can plug in a negative, a positive, or zero. It doesn't really make a difference. Now we look at the denominator. Same thing. We're going to think, is there any value of x that we cannot plug in? Meaning, is there any value of x here that we couldn't square? No, not really, right? You can square a positive value, a negative value, or zero. It doesn't make a difference. But now when I look at the fraction overall, is there any fraction, is there any value of a fraction that's, that's not allowed to occur? In other words, in the denominator, is there any value that the denominator of a fraction cannot be? Well, it turns out that there is a special value, and that's zero. Right? You cannot have zero in a denominator, because you can't divide zero into something. How many times does nothing fit into something? Not nothing times, it's an infinite number of times. All right, it does not make sense. So therefore, I know that my domain is going to be restricted to any values of x that uh, I plug into here that's going to give an overall value of zero in the denominator. So in order to answer that question, what you're going to do is you're going to take that denominator and set it equal to zero. And you're going to solve this for x, because when you do this, you are finding the x values that result in a zero value. <coughs> Can't really speak today. So x squared is going to be equal to positive 25. You can take the square root of both sides. And x is going to be positive and negative 5. So those are restrictions. If you plug in a positive 5 down here, the whole denominator is going to go to 0. If you plug in a negative 5 down here and square it, the whole denominator is going to go to 0. So basically now we found that the domain includes all real numbers, all real numbers except, except for, except for positive, uh, uh, well, positive 5, uh, negative 5. Cool. That's the domain. Next, the vertical asymptotes. Now it turns out that the vertical asymptotes is going to be very similar uh, to how we solve for the domain. Uh, there's one thing though, okay? There's one thing. So what you want to do is we're going to basically identify the same thing. Vertical asymptotes occur when the denominator becomes undefined, all right? Or I should say when the, when the function becomes undefined and when the denominator becomes zero. Uh, however, however, you have to make sure that there's no factors of this rational function that you can cancel. In other words, when I look at this, I can factor this bottom polynomial. I can factor it into x plus 5 and x minus 5, right? It's a perfect square. So I notice that, oh, in the numerator, I have the same factor, right? I have an x plus 5 up here and an x plus 5 down here. So what's going to happen is those factors will cancel. And what you're left with, basically, is you're left with now 1 over x minus 5. Okay, now this is the function that you're going to be evaluating for the vertical asymptote. Okay, so when you do the vertical asymptote, make sure you have everything factored and cancel any common factors. Then whatever remains, all you're going to do is take that denominator and set that equal to zero. So x minus 5 equals zero. And you're going to add the 5 on over to both sides, and you're going to get x is equal to positive 5. So what happens is that there's one vertical asymptote, not two. Okay, There's two values that x cannot be in terms of its domain. But in terms of the vertical asymptote, the equation of the vertical asymptote, there's only one of them. It's going to be x is equal to positive 5. Okay. Last but not least, then we're going to deal, the, deal with the horizontal asymptote. Now, when you deal with the horizontal asymptote, you first have to identify whether this is considered a top-heavy function, an equally weighted or heavy function, or a bottom-heavy bottom heavy function. And by top, equal, or bottom, what I'm referring to is I'm referring to the powers of x, both on the top and the bottom. In other words, what's the highest power of x in the numerator? Well, it's a 1. What's the highest power of x in the denominator? Well, it's a 2. 2 is greater than 1, and therefore this is a bottom-heavy function. If this were a 2, that would be an equally uh, heavy function, and if that were a 3, that would have been a top-heavy. Okay. Now, it turns out that whenever you have a bottom-heavy function, you can memorize this, but you're going to have a horizontal asymptote always at y equals 0. 
Now, the reason for this is that when you're thinking about horizontal asymptotes, you're really thinking about kind of the end behavior, when x becomes really, really large and really, really small. So what happens is when x becomes really, really large, the denominator's value dominates the overall function because the numerator is only raised to the first power, right? Any number you plug into x, whatever number it is, call it negative a million, all right, call it negative a million, you're going to take negative a million and square it down here. Meanwhile, you're only going to have negative one million. What the heck? That's 100,000. If I could count, that'd be nice. Uh, you're only going to have negative one million in the numerator, right? So negative one million squared is significantly bigger than just negative one million. And therefore, this denominator is going to become significantly bigger than the numerator. And you know what happens when a denominator becomes significantly large in, rel in relation to a numerator. Watch it goes to basically zero, right? I'm just going to do three, three, two, 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 boom, six times 10 to the minus 21 power, right? That's, that's zero point zero, 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 six. It's really close to zero. Okay. So your horizontal asymptote will always be zero. Now, what I'd like to do is just kind of show you on the calculator. All right, let's take a look at the graph. So go to your Y equals and now graph this thing. Okay. Clear out all the functions. And uh, open parentheses, you're going to do x plus 5 for the numerator, close the parentheses, then hit divided by, open the parentheses again, and then you're going to do x squared minus 25, close the parentheses. Now hit graph. Now I have, uh, I'm going to go to zoom standard. So if you're, just hit zoom, hit number 6, and here's the standard view, okay? Now what I'm going to do is just analyze this quickly. Okay, so let's take this, we'll blow it up. <laughs> So you blow it up. Now notice here, we have a vertical asymptote. Oh my goodness, where is this? A vertical asymptote right at x is equal to positive 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No. Right? No way. That's what we said it was going to be, one vertical asymptote. Not two. Okay, notice how you have to factor it out and cancel any factors. If you don't do that, you're going to be left with two answers and it's wrong. There is no, there are, there is not a second vertical asymptote. And notice that you have a horizontal asymptote here at y is equal to zero because it's a bottom heavy function. And that's it, my friends. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this video helps. And if it does, like, subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. We'd love to help you with more problems. All right, check us out. We have thousands of videos out there, not only in mathematics, but chemistry and physics, physics as well. I really can't speak today. And we have a lot more coming out. We're going to update a lot of stuff in the descriptions below. So please check those out. We want to help you get through your class. Take care.